So using clone stamp in a few well-chosen areas, I've given my my creature some believable uh, wolverine stripe across its back and some interesting coloring. Now I can continue to use that clone stamp on any layer that's below where it is because I have it set to be current and below. And when I was finishing at the end of last video, I was just using it a little bit on the legs here to extend a little bit of this bluish fur back. And then of course I can, because it's on its own layer, I can erase it out at a lower opacity and transition it, give it a little bit of a five o'clock shadow as that fur transitions. And you can see that kind of helps the illusion a little bit of this change in fur color. All right, I might even want to clone stamp a little bit of this fur. I need to be on the clone stamp, not the eraser. Back here, and then just use that eraser to blend it in. Just to darken that fur a little bit on the back as it goes into that stripe. Like so. Now all of this is in my design. I like it, I can save it. And then we move to transitioning <laughs> to the head. And this is where using direct adjustments is really going to help because this just feels lit in a totally different world. It also feels really big and it's covering up a lot of the, the work I did. So I'm gonna make a duplicate of it and play with this duplicate because I'm going to try things like really shrinking it down even though it's meant to be a main um, with free transform command T like try warping it and shifting it more up and back so it doesn't feel so plant like feels more like kind of almost a costume feature and then how the head inter interacts with that is something I'll do next. But first, I want to play with its color and its direct adjustments. Now that it's at least showing a little bit of the striping and the work I did. So, go to image. I've got to get onto the layer first. Image adjustments. Start with levels. And then play with it from the mid-tones. You can move your levels window around so you can see it clearly. It looks like I want it to go brighter in the midtones. I want to limit the highlights, kind of what I've been doing with most things. I might also want to limit the shadows a little. Some pretty deep shadows in that reference. Okay, and flick the head on. It's working so far. Now I want to play with the color a lot. So I'm going to go to color balance. This is the subtle color tool. I want to get it away from those yellows. Bring out the oranges more. Away from the greens. This has that toxic kind of greenish tint. I'm trying to push it away from. I think hue saturation is going to, like a targeted hue saturation is going to be really helpful, but that will be next. Then in my shadows, I might bring a little bit of that blue back. So let's see what that did. From this to this. So yeah, taking a lot of that green out. Now I'm going to go to the big guns for color, hue saturation. Maybe take the saturation of the master of everything down just a little bit. And now let's play with the hue. 
push it away from the, the green a little bit more towards the reds. And then let's target just the cyans. See if they're there. So that's not what I'm seeing. What am I seeing? Let's try the yellows. Yeah, so the yellows are going to make a big difference. So I'll up the saturation of the yellow a little bit, but shift its hue away from that, that green more towards the oranges. And I can play with lightening them a little bit. That helps, especially to match our, our kind of lighting conditions of the rest. Saturate it a little bit. That's just the yellows. Then I can go to the reds. I can play with those separately. Give them a little bit more color. Turn them a little bit deeper. Maybe even darken them a little. Kind of nice. All right. So now putting the head onto that. And actually, before I get to the head, cleaning up some of these internal edges. So you see all these black spots in this reference. I'm going to take my magic wand, going to have contiguous unchecked, going to click on those blacks, and then just delete them. And then you have these little white halos around everything. That was from my feather. So I'm going to try to select that white halo everywhere and then delete that. And now this is the fun thing. I can, I think that green's from somewhere else. Just in case, delete the empty space, yes. Okay, now I can give this a cast shadow. Looking at the lighting, it looks like the lighting's coming here. So I want a shadow that's hitting it like this. It's gonna fall on the legs. To do that, I double click and I give it a layer style that's a drop shadow. I'm gonna go ahead and use a fairly dark color at a really dark opacity so I can see it right now. It's at the right angle already. I'm just gonna increase its size and its distance. And you can see where that's gonna hit on the creature. And then I can take its opacity way down. And that's going to help really sell this being part of this body. And then I can even add noise to it, which helps a lot with photo reference. So noise in a drop shadow makes it kind of like a, a particulate spray like that, as opposed to it being really, really clean. Then I'll play with the opacity. Make it a little bit more subtle, a little bit smaller. All right, and then that's going to help. Now, of course, that extends my shadow beyond the corners of my creature, so I'll have to clean that up at the end, but I'll show you how. All right, next, the head. How do I transition this? Gotta open it up. Go from the background forward. And so really it's this neck piece that I need to transition. I'm gonna do that with my eraser. First at a 100% opacity. and I'm gonna get rid of that hard edge in these internal edges, these internal transitions, especially if they're gonna have leaves kind of sprouting out of it. So I got rid of that hard edge at the back. That means I can then go to lower opacity and start showing these different textures. Now, 
This is a lot like combining fur with feathers or with scales. You have to think about the quality of each thing and understand how it would move, right? So I'm looking at the direction of the fur and trying to erase away in the direction that it already is. So as it reveals the leaves here for this kind of mane, it still feels like it has the shape of the fur. And that's very helpful. And by using a low opacity, it's helping to blend these colors as well for me as I go. It's also a good time to play with adjustments. But before I do that, I'm going to merge these two layers because I have one for the eyes and then one for the back of the mane. Or the bottom. So I gotta get rid of that hard edge. And then I can use the softer opacity, transition it. We've got layers and layers of fur going on, revealing what's underneath. And you want lots of overlap. That's gonna help. So if I merge these two together, select them both, go to layer, merge layers. This is just to put all this internally composited head all in one place. Then I only have to erase from it in one place. I think I'm using different ears. Yeah, so I can really kind of follow the leaves, tell me what I need to, to get rid of here in terms of this collar. Transition away from it. Okay, take down some of those bright highlights in the fur, let the leaves come out. And again, leaves, scales, feathers, they all have a direction you have to kind of pay attention to. And you erase away in that motion. I'll make it all more believable than if you're cutting across it the wrong way. Now before I move on to the fox head, let's get the color where I want it for this combined layer. Again, with direct adjustments. And I have plenty of overlap here, so I don't really need to use clone stamp. I have plenty to work with. So I adjust the levels, adjust the color balance, get a little bit more yellow and red into it. It's still going to look like white fur, but just under a different type of lighting. You don't want to overdo it. I'm going to counter that with the shadows just a little bit. Okay, so you see the difference there. Now hue saturation. This is just for the transition, so if anything, I want to bring up the reds 